Hey there, Internet. I'm Michael, and this is Two Can Play That Game, with a review of Above and Below by Red Raven Games. So let's start with just a brief summary about what Above and Below actually is. So it's a game where you're building up your village because your old village got destroyed and so you've gone in search of a new place to settle a village. And where you've decided on, you've found that there are underground caverns that might provide you riches and places to build underground that would be more secure. So the nature of the game is that you will be building up your village, buying buildings, collecting resources. So you'll be managing those resources each round in order to be able to buy bigger, better buildings. But also you have an aspect of being able to go and explore these caves underground. The nature of this exploration underground involves a kind of choose your own adventure. So I don't know if any of you ever played these books as children where it, you would read a page and then it would say, do you wish to do A, do you wish to do B, and you would turn to the appropriate page. It's much like that. You'll be given a paragraph of text and given some options to choose from. You'll then choose the option and that will dictate how difficult the challenge that you're trying to overcome is and what reward you'll therefore get. Then at the end of the game, you get awarded village points. So there are lots of different ways to get village points. You'll get village points for having buildings, for having goods, and also for reputation from exploring. And you can also get it in other ways by buying certain cards that will give you bonus points. And whoever has the most village points will win the game. So that's a brief summary about what Above and Below actually is. If you do want more information, you can look at my other videos. I do have a rules explanation and also a playthrough that you can watch. So what do I think of it? Well, let's start with the artwork. And I really love the artwork. I think Ryan's done a very good job and he tends to always do a good job on the art on his games. I just find it very appealing, very light, family friendly, bright and draws you in. And this artwork that you see on the box carries out throughout everything, all the different cards. It is all the same throughout. So if you don't like the box artwork, you're probably not going to like the artwork on the rest of the game. Now, a small thing I want to note that I do really appreciate artwork wise in this is that you collect villagers as part of this game that you use to then perform certain actions. And each of these villagers has a different portrait on them. Every single one is different. And I really like that, especially as there are so many. I think that's a really nice touch to have done that. So each and every one is unique. And that very much helps to add to the story element of this game because you can name your villagers, you can build up your villagers and they're unique villagers compared to what anyone else has. It isn't, oh yes, that's my person who has blonde hair and you've got the same person with blonde hair. No, your villagers are your villagers. They are unique to you. So that's all I'm going to talk about artwork wise. I really like it, but it is a very subjective field. So components. Well, let's start with the boards here. These are good heavyweight boards and both the player boards and the cent central reputation track board here are all this heavyweight cardboard, really nice, good quality. And the same goes for all of these tokens that you have in the game for all the different resources and for your villagers. It's all this really nice compacted heavyweight cardboard, very good quality. Now the cards are perfectly fine, they're nice linen finish, good cards. Other than that, not really a lot to talk about on them. The rule book is very good. It is really nice and clearly laid out. It's bright and vibrant throughout. It's got this little comic giving you the backstory of the game. I think it's a lovely rule book and they've done a good job on it. And that leaves this encounter book. And this makes the story aspect of the game. The you flick to a paragraph and you find it. It's the fact that they've done this as a ring binder 
because they know how much you're going to be flicking through this and how quickly you're going to want to flip to the right pages. Really sensible, really good component-wise idea to make it a ring binder rather than just a book. So that's everything for components. Well, what about the gameplay? I think this game has a lot to offer to a lot of different people gameplay-wise. For those people who like their Euro games, there's a bit of a point saladness going on in this game. Because every game I've played, I've tried different ways to get points. And they're all viable. They're all, there's no, this is the one set path to victory. You can choose, well, I want to be a village that goes exploring and has lots of caves, or I want to be a village that just has lots of people, and you can still have a lot of points and be in the running for winning the game. So I think that will really appeal to the Eurogamers out there, because you can sit and work out well, if I do this, it'll give me this many points. If I do this, it'll give me this many points. And then I, it'll allow me to do this and it'll allow me to do that. You can do that and that will appeal to the Eurogamers out there. But then you also have the storytelling aspect of this. And that can be as integrated or as separate as you make what choose to make it. Because of the nature of it, you can choose to have it be this in-depth role play experience where you've named all your characters and yes he has this personality etc or you can just choose to go yep this is my person who has these stats it is up to you and then when you go adventuring and you read those paragraphs you can just read the paragraph this is what it is or you can put your thoughts into yes so this is the story this is this character this is how they sound and then base your decisions on what you think the best reward would be if you want to just play as a gamer or what you think your characters would do if you want to play from a story point of view so that works really nicely and does appeal to a lot of people now it isn't the easiest game to pick up and learn i wouldn't recommend it as a gateway game for new gamers however it is still a relatively light game that can appeal to a lot of people and a lot of different ages but with enough depth there that you can keep playing it with enough changes now i've played probably half a dozen no more than that nearly a dozen games of this and I've only a few times had with the adventures the same story come out. There's never been a case of it feeling like a repetitive experience of it always playing the same. When you go adventuring, those stories are different most of the time, or at the very least, the way they combine with what else you're doing will be different. And the characters that you've potentially chosen, I have yet to find that when you come to it, you end up playing the same way. There's no, oh, right, well, this is what you do on your first turn, etc. So it is a very enjoyable game. I am really much liking this. One thing I do want to say is obviously there's not a lot of luck in this for the most part, except for what buildings come out until you go adventuring. Now, the adventuring is extremely luck heavy. And I'm not just talking about the fact that you're rolling dice to determine your adventure, that you're rolling dice to determine whether you succeed when you go exploring. No, I'm talking about the what you get as a reward. There does not seem to be a great balance of difficulty to reward. Now, there's a definite within each paragraph, the higher the difficulty, the better the reward. But you might find you'll have a explore five and one paragraph that will give you a coin and maybe an item that is medium rarity and on another one you'll have an explore five that will give you six coins and an item of medium rarity so there's a little bit of a balance issue and it can be a case of just getting lucky there but if you are going the exploring route, you're probably doing that more because you're interested in the story aspect of the game. So that balance is less of an issue. So that just leaves, can two play this game? Yes, two can play this game. In fact, I would probably recommend that you do play with two players because that way you're pretty much always engaged. There can be a bit of analysis paralysis where you're spending a bit 
of a time, trying to decide what you actually want to do each turn. And if you've got players who are prone to that, this game will bring it out. But the main reason I would say two players is because when you have someone going exploring, you'll have one person reading the text and one person making the decision. So that means two people are involved. And therefore, if you're doing a two player game, both people are involved in that encounter. Whereas when you go three or four players, because of that AP aspect, the game starts to slow down. It starts to have a bit of a downtime feel between turns. And especially when someone else goes exploring because you're just sat there, not really invested in what the outcome is because it doesn't hugely affect you and can drag a bit. But overall, I think this is a very good game. As I say, I wouldn't class it as an intro game, but it is definitely still a light game with a great wide appeal. So I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. Of course, if you have enjoyed the video, do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, as well as subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your friends and family. Also, you can find us on social media. We're on Twitter and Facebook. And as always, thanks for watching and... Bye for now.